Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is January 22nd, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, a question for Hillary. Last week it was reported on InfoWars.com that your email server was hacked and you knowingly continued to use your email server. Can you comment on that? Yeah, it's totally untrue. The question stems from an exclusive InfoWars interview earlier this month in which former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino reported that Hillary continued using her private email to discuss classified information while knowing that her server had been compromised. Not only was the email server hacked, but the Clintons knew it was hacked. And not only is she not currently indicted or in prison, she's running to be president of the United States. If this is not a red flag to every Paul Revere out there that something's wrong, then you know what? The country is lost. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Another conspiracy theory. Well, uh, let me, let me. <laughs> Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons. Stainless steel construction. Easy assembly. Low maintenance. Replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. Ladies and gentlemen, first item of news tonight is incredibly important. So important, I've preempted the start of the show. Jakari Jackson and all the latest breaking news is coming up here in just about five minutes for the hour-long nightly news transmission. It is the 22nd day of January 2016 on this Friday edition. Again, I am your host, Alex Jones. We're also doing a live Facebook mentions right now. Uh, as we tape this for the news, show that this get, gets out now. This is so serious. As I got off the air at 2 o'clock Central earlier today, I was handed a Defense One article. I also saw it mentioned in Politico, and I went and actually read over the bill, and it is staggering. It is staggering. It is nothing less than military martial law, not just in America, but world wide as NATO, as a world government army. And it gets worse. They're convening a 29-nation meeting next month on the, quote, threat of ISIS. And really, that's the cover for NATO to operate in any country, anywhere they want. This is the global government army. This is so incredible. So I'm about to go over this for everybody and then go over some of the background. Now, Undoubtedly, just like with Jade Helm, the media will misconstrue or edit this to say that I'm saying they're coming for your guns th this week or next month, or that they're going to lock everybody up next month, or that this will be physical martial law like North Korea. No. Martial law simply means a suspension of normal law, basically ruled by a dictator or military. Go read the Webster Dictionary version. There's several, but that's basically it. When the Senate votes to give the president unlimited power for military action anywhere in the world, anytime he wants in perpetuity, that's an unprecedented, unconstitutional declaration of war. It gets worse. Even Defense One says, this is incredible, this is unprecedented, this is raising eyebrows, he's trying to sneak it through when Snowmageddon has hit and they're saying shelter in place and are looking at five to 10 feet of snow in DC. So almost no one's there, they said the Congress had shut down, and then he's going in, just like the Federal Reserve Act passed in 1913, on what, Christmas Eve, in the middle of a blizzard. Well, here we are in the middle of a record blizzard, the 22nd, 2016, in January, and they're doing this. Buckley, I'm going to go to document cam. Um, 
for folks that are uh, watching right now, I guess we can go over to that television there and show folks, but we're going to go over this for the folks on Facebook mentions and the prisonplanet.tv nightly news viewers. But here it is, Defense One. Mind you, this is not Alex Jones saying all this, okay? And this is just all part of the economic collapse, uh, Europe declaring civil emergencies, economic emergencies, uh, suspension of rights, suspensions of, of, of being able to protest, any of this. So, so let's go over it. Senate leader surprises lawmakers with new ISIS war powers request. War powers. Now, normally they did a declaration of war. It was a huge deal. Then they just call it war powers. Oh, if you know... Uh, terrorists attack the Capitol, the military is allowed to respond. No, no, this is worldwide, 360, anytime they want. And then they'll spin it and go, you don't trust our military. No, our military is saying, get controls over Obama and the globalists. And here's this rhino neocon, Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, giving the president unprecedented power. And listen, it may get worse, okay, down the road. And, and, and they'll give them even more powers. The point is, is that this is martial law on the books if this passes, and they're trying to ram it through very, very sneakily. So continuing, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell offered members a snow weekend surprise, quietly teeing up a debate on the legal underpinning for the fight against ISIS. After months of worrying that such a resolution, known as an authorization for the use of military force, would tie the next president's hands, McConnell's move to fast-track the measure surprised even his top deputy, Senate Majority Leader John Cornyn, another senator from Texas, who was unaware that McConnell had set up the authorization. He did, Cornyn asked National Journal. The AUMF put forward by McConnell would not restrict the president's use of ground troops nor have any limits. They can just invade Syria, whatever. Related to time or geography. So you can use ground troops wherever you want, any country you want, no related time, in perpetuity. Forget geography. I mean, this is a global 360 declaration of U.S. military martial law, but the U.S. doesn't run the U.S. It's even worse. We're run by globalists. Come on over here, Buckley. We'll get into the document here. So look at this for yourself. Obama administration, the use of ground troops, nor have any limits related to time or geography, nor would it touch on the same issue of what to do with the 2001 AUMF, which the Obama administration has used to attack ISIS despite this authorization instructions to use force against those who plan the 9-11 terrorist attacks. By contrast, the legal authority put forward by the administration last February wouldn't authorize enduring offensives, uh, ground troops operations, and what have ended three years ago and then it goes on. So see, that was the whole debate. Don't give them unlimited ground troop power or they'll do a Syrian war backing ISIS and Al-Qaeda. But forget that. This is anywhere in the world. So they can attack Russia. They can launch attacks in Ukraine uh, where we got U.S. troops fighting Russians now, it's admitted. They can start a war with China. They can do anything. They can use them here in America. And of course, when they use them, it'll be meant to look legitimate. So the police and the military all work together. And so it looks legitimate. It's all part of a process of conditioning us to accept it. And then we point out we've got NSA spying. They deny it's happening. Then they say, oh, it's only on terrorists. Then it turns out they're using the NSA to spy on the FBI. So they can't stop San Bernardino terrorists. And then we learn they're working with the terrorists because it's a foreign multinational group, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's go to a couple more articles right here. This is what else has been happening. Michael Schneider, who was on today from Economic Collapse blog. Emergency powers gives Barack Obama authority over just about everything during a major national crisis, including economic. Obama is now the most powerful president in history. And the precedent set to this to be passed to the next president. It's about the power structure abolishing the Bill of Rights and Constitution by fiat, by executive action. Let's continue. Obama signs executive order to allow detention of all Americans with respiratory illnesses or any signs of it separately there. They've built civilian inmate labor camp programs and admit that they will, quote, re-educate extremists at them. Remember this last week, January 8th, or two weeks ago, CNN op-ed calls for Obama to declare national state of emergency to gut Second Amendment to scare us into submission with the announcement of confiscation. That'll start a civil war. I don't know exactly everything they're up to. I don't know when what shoes are going to drop or what balloons are going to go up. But I know this. The whole world is going into tyranny. Global government's being announced, run by above the law, 
mega corporations that control our governments and play populations off against each other. And the fact that this bill was introduced and that it's gotten no attention, it was introduced secretly basically two days ago. Cornyn said he hadn't heard of it yesterday, and now it's just been in a few newspapers today. And, and, and again, this should be one of the top stories in the country right now, in the world, that the United States that has half the military power in the world, half the defense budget, probably more than half the military power in the world, is about to sign over to a Barack Obama unlimited power to attack whoever he wants, whenever he wants, when you read the authorization. And this is a guy already caught funding ISIS. This is a guy already caught funding al-Nazr and al-Qaeda. This is crazy. But this is what happens in every other country and every other culture over and over again historically. This is martial law 2016. It is the theme of where we're going. They will never call it martial law. They will call it civil emergency. They think the public's too dumb on NFL playoffs to even see what's happening. When we complain, they just say, oh, none of this is even going on, knowing the public's ignorant. But the good news is more and more people are listening. More and more people are involved. More and more people are aware of what's happening. And most importantly, I talk to our military. I have a lot of them on the air, even active duty. And they're aware of what's going on and tell me that they're not going to go along with this tyranny. Folks, we need to come together as a nation, not let George Soros and the White House start a race war. We need to come together and promote liberty and freedom. We need to uh, defend ourselves. We need to get prepared. We need to be politically active. We need to be on the defense and the offense. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw it into the main transmission, the intro for InfoWars Nightly News and all of the info coming up. And I know Jakari Jackson will have more to say on this uh, as it unfolds, but no one can deny that massive, sustained preparations for political oppression and attacks on the press and the IRS assaults on gun owners and Christian groups and, and, and real classical persecution and oppression is already happening at unprecedented scales and is being geared up for even more. And here's something I've been told by the establishment and, and by media people. They go, Alex, you're left on air because you scare people. And we can't come right out and admit we're doing all this. And so you're just, we let you do what you do because you scare them. Well, you know what? I think they've miscalculated. I think you want to face a crisis. I think you want to face these evil people. I think you want to not turn tail and run from it and roll over to these wolves. I know historically that when people are really faced with the truth, a lot of them stand up and that's when tyranny is defeated. Denying this, being cowards is only going to destroy us. It's happening regardless. They're coming after everybody's pension funds. They're coming after us to break us financially. And I don't believe you're cowards. I believe you deserve to hear the truth and deserve to know what's really happening to you and your family right now is the greatest country in the history of the world is swallowed by classical, bona fide, stinking tyranny. And the rest of the world is following suit as well. The planet is in grave danger. Huge wars are starting. The economy is plunging. It's all to bring in the world government, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm going to throw it to Jakari Jackson, the official kickoff of InfoWars Nightly News. Please get this transmission out to everyone you know, and please stay with us and get this information out to everybody in the articles at InfoWars.com that break this down and link to all the evidence. I'm Alex Jones signing off until the official kickoff of InfoWars Nightly News. And that was Alex Jones with a breaking news report. Now, David Knight, that was a lot of information to ingest. So can you break it down for us? Well, Jakari, when I look at this, I, I see surrenders and surprises. Because we've had Congress surrender its authority to multinational corporations to write trade treaties. We've had them surrender their ability to write laws to the bureaucracies. Last year, we had over 81,000 pages of rules and regulations coming from the bureaucracy. So we now have not only... Uh, taxation without representation, but legislation without representation. And of course, this is part of them surrendering their authority to declare war. So Congress has completely surrendered, but there's also a surprise element in this. And that is the fact that this came out just as the snow uh, weekend is happening, massive uh, snow Snowmageddon. Exactly. And, and when you look at this, the thing that concerns me about the authorization of the use of military force goes in conjunction with the uh, NDAA. And similarly, with the NDAA, we also had a surprise. Going back to January the 1st, 2012, New Year's Eve, President Obama had signed the authorization for indefinite detention 
without trial by the military, okay, which could be used to give the Gitmo treatment to everyone. And when we looked at this, we said, well, it's troubling because we have an authorization for the use of military force that is not really limited to foreign wars. It could be used here in the United States. It's worldwide. Now, they said at the time on the uh, authorization of the use of military force, that was directed against al-Qaeda. This particular one is being directed now against ISIL. Mm -hmm. And uh, presumably, if they call it ISIS, they won't have to do a third one, okay? <laughs> but what's also troubling about this is that there is no limitation as to where it can be used or for how long it can be used. So they basically are giving all presidents uh, a blank check to use military ground troops wherever, whenever, for as long as they wish. Uh, and that's what's really troubling about this, besides the fact that this is coming up as a surprise. Uh, even the Senate Majority Whip, John Cornyn, who would be the one to introduce legislation to others, was totally surprised. And asked about it, he goes, uh, McConnell did? He introduced that? I didn't know anything about that. So when we see this type of thing being done in this way, we should be very concerned about it. We should also be concerned about any bill that gives uh, a, a, a carte blanche to the government to go anywhere at any time. Just as we've talked about before, the war on terror is an open blank check as it is, mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a war against a tactic. There's not typically a named enemy, but even when there is a named enemy, uh, I, they can always declare that somebody is associated with uh, ISIS, uh, with ISIL, and now they're bringing people in by massive amounts into the United States. We should be very concerned about that because that means that they will be using that here in America. Yes, and we've seen uh, things such as Rex 84. As a matter of fact, I was reading this online the other day, reading up on Rex 84, how they had plans uh, going back to 1984, a readiness exercise with yeah. Oliver North, who was busted under Iran Contra. And it was yeah. so controversial at the time, but people don't understand that they keep repackaging these things. That was 1984. Yeah. yeah. What type of thing do they have now? And we see this right now with the. Uh, with the document you have. When you look at this, you have to understand that, you know, the, the government doesn't follow the restrictions that are in the Constitution in so many blatantly obvious ways. So why would we expect that when they give themselves this kind of wiggle room, when they introduce these kind of measures, when you've got a massive snowstorm and nobody knows anything about it, it's introduced at the last moment, just as Obama, remember when the NDAA came out, he had pledged that he was not, it was a controversy about the fact there's going to be indefinite detention by the military. He says, I'll veto that. And then quietly, on New Year's Eve, he signs this in, and then he puts in a sign, signing statement saying, well, I want to make it clear I would, I would never use this against Americans, but who knows what pre next uh, uh, presidents would do it. Who knows if he will change his mind? Because he had just lied to everybody about the fact that he wasn't going to sign it, that he's right. going to veto it. And so then he signs it and says, don't worry, uh, I've now got a new promise for you that you can trust. Uh, you can trust me. I'm on the honor <laughs> system. Thank you so much, David Knight, and I'm sure we'll have more reports about this. Stay tuned after this for more special reports. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which one I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. 
Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. Leanne McAdoo for InfoWars.com. I'm standing here in front of the waterline in Flint, Michigan. Now, people have been coming in and out of here all day, every day, since a federal emergency has been declared. We've got the Army National Guard out here. Uh, everyone rolls up to this waterline. They've got to show ID. And each family receives one case a day. And like we heard uh, one of the residents here to tell us that, you know, you got to use one bottle of water to get yourself soapy and then the next bottle of water you'll use to actually clean all the soap off. So if you can imagine for a family of four or five, that's not that much water to last you throughout the day. They have had some reports of people actually trying to cheat the water system, getting more cases of water. And of course, you know, some people aren't even able to come here and get that water. So they're being taken advantage of uh, by people who are trying to resell this free water. Um, again, they're taking donations. And they say they haven't run out of water just yet, but we do have, um, you know, Cher has said she's going to donate about 200,000 cases of water. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive. People are all stepping up here. Uh, but as you can see, this is the state of emergency here in Flint, Michigan. This is what people um, are having to deal with. Depending on the, the government and the uh, assistance of kind people and their donations to get this one case of water a day. Stay tuned to InfoWars.com for more reports. $66 before one drop of water comes out my tap. Yeah. And we're paying for it. We can't bathe in it. We can't cook in it. We can't do anything. I lost the animal to feeding it to it. You can't do anything with it. The only thing you can do is flush your toilets. Mm -hmm. And that's the God honest truth. And make sure that you use cold water with anything in Flint. Hot, yeah. The vapors are killing us. That's, that's the where truth. the... And the vapors have asthmatic, to do with my husband, he has COPD, I'm asthmatic, well, you know, the hair loss, I've got it. People want to talk about it, let's talk about it. Because I'm 52 years old, I have hair that was down to my butt, now I've cut it because I gotta hide the bald spots from the water. And where are we, gotta go? Where are we gonna go to bathe? What are we supposed to do? We, we, we can't go nowhere, we have to pay for this water. We've got shut off notice, oh, they're not gonna give you shut off notices, they're not gonna do it in December. Oh, yeah, yeah, let me tell you. Yeah, shut me off in December, all right, for non-payment. Non had to pay it, or in December, you know, my kids would have went without Christmas. We had to pay for water that stinks, you can't drink, you can't smell, looking at it make you choke up a little bit. 
So it's sickening. That we pay or pay. We, have we have the highest rates. water rates. They oh, upped our water pay. rates three times in one year, and it was like 70% in one year without um, the people's vote on it. We didn't have a say in it. It went from one amount to another amount to another amount, and it's like, oh, well, I ain't using that much water. Oh, now your water bill's this much, you know? And I have another problem with the Flint's basic... Um, little thing in their political game here. Isn't it funny that we've got this, I'm gonna call it Watergate, because there was a, a break-in to the city files, the water department, and only the things that can get the people that did what they did or got the dirt on them come out missing. Not my bills, not the meter-ridden bills, not the bills gonna be sent to the people, <laughs> just the information that's gonna cover their butts came out missing. Can anybody say Watergate? And it isn't, it isn't them against us, and it shouldn't be, it should be, we the damn people for once. Stand together united. It is, I am just one of all of us. And it takes all of us to make this merry-go-round go, you know? And that's what makes me so angry is like, I don't want to talk, I didn't want to either, you know? Because I'm so angry now that sometimes biting my tongue just ain't enough. And I look at my grandson, and he's got sores, and I look at the skin problems, and he's um, a mixed child. And he has a lot of skin issues anyways with ashiness, and, his, uh, and nothing's hitting it. He's had little spots on his head, and like she said with her son, oh, that they were saying it was scabies last year. No, they told my grandson, oh, it's scabies, put this on it. Oh, no, try this antibody, try that. It was never scabies. Here they were poisoning our kids, putting the stuff on them day after day for these rashes that never went away until they, we stop using the water. You know what I do? It takes five waters, bottles of water to take a shower in Flint. You dump the first one over you and it gets your hair wet. You wash up, you get all soapied up and you kind of let it just drizzle down, wash it up and then you use the next four to rinse off. Ta-da, that's a friggin' shower in Flint. I'm here with business owner Rob Clady. Now, Rob, thanks for talking to us. How has this affected you, knowing that the water is contaminated here? What's it doing for business? What's the, the, the mood in the air? Well, the mood is concerned. I think almost every one of our customers that haven't been here before will ask that question about the water. Like, what are you doing? What do you think? And so, yeah, it's something that we've had to, to deal with. I'm sure it's impacting um, sales, but I do feel pretty fortunate that, um, you know, we're still doing quite well. People are coming in, and I think it has even inspired people that want to support us, knowing that we do test, that we're safe uh, to get out and help, and help us out, too. So, um, all in all, I mean, there is a very concerned mood in the city, but I mean, personally, I feel very fortunate. And so what about, uh, what do you feel about some of the reassurances with the water levels? They're doing a lot of testing. Uh, we've seen some of the emails coming out where they are um, sort of allowing the water to run through the, the tap before testing it to sort of mess with the levels a little bit. Have you done testing of your own? Are you satisfied with what you're hearing? So yes, we always test. Um, <clears throat> there's lots of things that, that we hear, um, you know, trust it or oh no, it's the worst thing. I don't know. I guess I'm a skeptic by nature. So we test everything we always have. We filter. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, our kind of our obligation is to our customer uh, to provide yeah, safe water. It's, it's at the core of, of the beer that we make, of the coffee that, that we brew. Uh, so we need to be certain that it is good. And so we have to test it. Um, and that's always been the case and it always will be the case. So I don't pay a whole lot of attention to, to um, what everyone, you know, the changing mood of the day or whatever, uh, because we need, we need to know on our end that it is safe. And so you were actually kind of lucky because when you opened this business in 2011, you actually installed uh, sort of a powerhouse of a reverse osmosis machine. So you sort of lucked out in that respect. But what about when you go home? You know, what's the mood there? Well, we, we do actually happen to live in this building. So I have six children and they come downstairs, they take turns and they get bottles of water and they take it back up. Um, so yeah, I know what we're drinking. I'm very confident in it. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's very, again, very fortunate to have that system and, and have the confidence of, of knowing what's in it. And then, so what are you hearing about from other people in other neighborhoods? Is it is it localized to just one neighborhood or is the entire area here in Flint affected by this, this water switchover? Well, we know the entire area is not affected because um, those like myself that have done the testing, like our area, or at least 
this particular area has never showed lead in the samples. We test monthly. Uh, it's never showed it coming in or going out. Um, and I've heard that same story with other business owners that I know down in the downtown area. <clears throat> but that's only the downtown area. So I know there are other neighborhoods that have you know old lead pipes, and they have shown um, elevated levels in their samples. Um, I, I've been told, and I, I think I read in the Kettering report, that it, two percent of samples show elevated levels. So it's certainly not everywhere, um, but it's a concern. How pissed were you when you heard that they were going to be switching the, the water from Detroit to the Flint River? Because it's right right out there. Well, okay, so. I think hindsight is 2020, but if I'm honest, I wasn't pissed at the time because what I felt at the time is that Detroit was kind of taking advantage of the situation. Uh, there is a long-term plan to connect uh, via a new water line that's going to um, Lake Huron, and I, I felt like, well, we we're going to do what we we're going to do anyway and test and, and filter, and I thought using the Flint River, which, which is clean, there is no lead in the Flint River, right? Um, but yes, it would need to be treated correctly, and it was, and I think that's the problem. So at the time, <clears throat> it made perfect sense to me, and I think most people, um, to save the money. And I think what happened is it wasn't it wasn't handled properly, and uh, that came as a surprise to some, and not to others. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, you know, how do, your heart must go out for these other families and their children, and, and sort of the long term effects it's going to have on this community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I. Yeah, that's um, like it's the basic thing. Like you, you, your responsibility as a parent is to make sure that you, you raise your kids and and they're safe. And um, yeah, it's <clears throat> yeah, very. It's the emotion is everywhere in this, and I think that's uh, that's understandable. And like I feel it, and I I think it's also clouding some of the issue because like at some point we do need to isolate and and actually take action and do things, um, and so. Yeah, the emotion of it and the fact that it's children makes it makes it a tough um, tough issue. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up. from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and and during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. Infowarslife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> The top banker in Davos Insider recently admitted that an economic collapse is intimate because central banks are completely out of ideas. The banker, William White, says the global debts and stresses on the financial system are worse than what it was in 2007. He practically admitted that Keynesian economics were a failure by stating that macroeconomic ammunition to fight further economic downturns were essentially all used up. Stock markets suffered their worst start to the year since the Great Depression. Around the world, stock prices dropped due to the downfall of China and the collapse of oil prices. The price of gold is exploding as people seek stability for what remains of their wealth. The Dow Jones dropped 7% in the first two weeks of 2016, and even worse, the Shanghai Index was down 18%. China posted its worst economic growth in 25 years, and tens of thousands of factory workers are fixing to lose their jobs. And tens of thousands of Americans are also about to lose their jobs as oil sales were below half the break-even price producers need in order to stay in operation. And Walmart's closing hundreds of stores while other retailers are suffering the worst yearly start since 2009. And despite all this, Obama actually had the audacity to suggest that. Anyone claiming that America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. Right now, the economy is worse than what it was before the 2008 financial crisis, but just how bad is it going to be? Well, for one thing, the world's elites over the past year have been buying up secret hideaways and remote locations to escape potential riots caused by a cataclysmic event. According to economist Robert Johnson, head fund managers all over the world are buying up airstrips and farms in places like New Zealand because they think they need a getaway from potential civil unrest due to income inequality. In fact, a 2014 NASA-funded study revealed that civilization as we know it is headed for an irreversible collapse. The study used historical data showing that the process of rise and collapse is actually a recurrent cycle found throughout history. According to the study, the fall of the Roman Empire, as well as so many other advanced empires, are all testimony to the fact that advanced, sophisticated, complex, and creative civilizations can be both fragile and impermanent. And there's compelling evidence to suggest that the United States, particularly its economy, is also collapsing. For one thing, the Federal Reserve System, a private banking cartel that in 1913 was given the exclusive right to create money, caused the stock market crashes of 1929, 1987, and 2008. <laughs> Gee, a monopoly on the creation of money. And what do you think the Federal Reserve System has done with it over the past hundred years? Simple. They've created so much money now that the value of the dollar has declined 96%. They create money out of nothing with a keystroke for their buddies and government and Wall Street, which we the people pay for through the loss of the value of the money in our pockets, otherwise known as inflation. Now there's so much money in the system thanks to the Fed's so-called quantitative easing that experts suggest that the stock market is overvalued 80%. The U.S. dollar is now so devalued that banks are trying to charge customers to keep their money in the bank or to even use a debit card. And in 2013, Chase Bank, which is at the top of the pyramid in the corporate banking governmental structure, imposed capital controls on small business owners to prevent money leaving the country. Let's not also forget that the world's largest banks are extremely overexposed to derivatives. 
A derivative is a legal bet on the future value or performance of an entity, such as an asset, index, or an interest rate. So in other words, a derivative, unlike stocks and bonds, isn't actually an investment in something that actually exists. Imagine derivatives as bets on a horse race and Wall Street as a giant casino where all these bets are taking place. To put it all in perspective, Goldman Sachs actually owns 341 times as many derivatives than assets. And with this excessive amount of risk versus assets, these big banks could easily crash world markets, destroying what's left of the global economy, leaving us in economic oblivion. And there's other signs that the US economy is headed for a large scale recession. For one thing, historically, as the stock market speculation grew in the 1920s, so did the height of skyscrapers. After the end of World War I, there was a huge surge in the construction of skyscrapers as a real estate boom swept the US fueled by the Federal Reserve's expansion of the money supply. This is called the skyscraper curse. Historically, there's an explosion in skyscraper construction right before an economic crisis. As the Mises Institute points out, the building of record-setting skyscrapers does not cause world economic crises. The records are merely symptoms of the underlying cause of world economic bubbles, sustained artificially low interest rates by central banks. And today we see both artificially low interest rates and an explosion of skyscraper construction across the world. In fact, in 2014, nearly 100 skyscrapers over 650 feet tall were built, setting a new record. And according to the skyscraper curse, the economy will soon implode. And to further add to the evidence, the Royal Bank of Scotland even warned its clients to sell everything and exit the stock market as soon as possible. The bank is freaking out in particular over the plunge in oil prices. And although we know OPEC was keeping the supply of oil artificially high to bankrupt US oil producers, particularly shale producers, the price dropped below what OPEC wanted. In fact, Saudi Arabia now admits that the price of oil is hurting its economy. But why is the price of oil so low? Well, it's pretty simple. The demand for oil is now following the slowdown in the economy. All this combined reveals that the global economy is heading for another 2008 style financial crisis, or even worse, a 1929 style Great Depression. This is Kit Daniels with Infowars.com reporting for Resistance News. A Southern California gas company, Gaswell, has been leaking the simple hydrocarbon known as methane at a rate of 110,000 pounds per hour since October of 2015, according to UC Davis scientist Stephen Conley. That number is roughly a quarter of the methane emissions of the entire state of California, a rate of climate pollution equal to the amount seven and a half million cars put out every day. The methane facility is the fifth largest in the United States and the largest in the Western United States. The mountain of gas stored at Californians Aliso Canyon storage facility is 8,000 feet deep and measures 3,000 pounds per square inch. Officials estimate it will have released 10 million tons of methane worth at least a billion dollars by the predicted end of the event in March. UC Davis scientist Stephen Conley says, to put this into perspective, the leak effectively doubles the emission rate for the entire Los Angeles basin. On a global scale, this is big. Given our 1,500 hours of, of experience flying over oil and gas fields and all different types of emission sources, this one is 10 or 20 times bigger than the next largest emission source that I've ever seen. Meanwhile, thousands have been forced from their homes and businesses, and two schools have been closed after residents of the city of Porter Ranch in the San Fernando Valley pleaded with the Southern California Gas Company to relocate them after many experienced nosebleeds, headaches, and nausea. It's pretty gnarly looking is what I think of it. I think it's terrible, and it's making a lot of people sick around here. I know that. It's, they've got to do something about it. California's Governor Jerry Brown didn't declare the disaster as a state of emergency until two months had passed. The emergency now being regarded as the BP oil spill on land. The governor had been too busy protecting a $2 million plus dollar kickback cookie jar that he didn't even have time to visit the site and ignored it altogether in his latest State of State address. According to the Washington Free Beacon, Kathleen Brown, the governor's sister, sits on the board of directors of Sempra Energy, the parent company of Southern California Gas, 
Brown serves on SEMPRA's Corporate Governance and Environmental Health Safety and Technology Committees and received $188,300 in compensation. According to California campaign finance records, since 1992, SEMPRA has made over $3 million in total political contributions. Officials have currently doubled the impact zone of the methane gas leak, accelerating devastating greenhouse gas emissions into the Los Angeles area. And Reuters reported air quality regulators agreed on Wednesday to scrap a proposal to capture and burn off some of the methane spewing into the air. Typically, as a nod to his globalist criminal counterparts at Davos, uh, we have said, and we must uh, deliver, that uh, rich countries uh, must give uh, money for climate uh, to uh, developing countries, and we have to give money and to check. Governor Jerry Brown blatantly ignores his deep involvement in the disaster while grandstanding about climate change. When he declared, thankfully the rest of the world has heard the message, humankind must change the ways and radically decarbonize the economy. The Paris Climate Agreement was a breakthrough. Hypocrisy doesn't get any bigger than this. John Bound for Infowars.com. Al Capone owed $150,000 in back taxes to the IRS, and he went to prison. Al Sharpton, he owes $4.5 million, and he goes to dinner at the White House. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you can get six months free at PrisonPlanet.tv, but only for one more week. Next Monday, the special that only comes around once a year ends. In fact, we've never offered six months free before, but I really want to get more people to join and to be able to watch the nightly news, to see the live reports we do, the special reports, all my films, ebooks, and so much more. One person can share their membership with 20 people, and you are funding the absolute very leading edge, the vanguard of the resistance to the globalist operation on every front. We have to have our own platform that is harder for them to censor, harder for the system to shut down. PrisonPlanet.tv. We put out the daily radio show free with the video and audio feeds at Infowars.com forward slash show. But it is the members that get the nightly news exclusively and first and the commercial free video podcast and audio podcast that are paying it forward and financing and helping so many other people see the truth when we put the videos on Facebook, YouTube, and it's prisonplanet.tv that finances so much of the cameras, the equipment, the crew. The reporters, you are becoming a PrisonPlanet.tv member. You get exclusive HD, higher quality, get it first. And then you can download it, share it with friends and family, share your passcode with them, your username. It's a win-win. And then you're helping finance to put it out for free to everybody. PrisonPlanet.tv. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. We have breaking news from Infowars.com. It seems that Richard Reeves, Infowars.com political correspondent and reporter, was at an event where Hillary decided to take questions on the rope line. And this is what it's like, people. You get out, you get in the game, and you never know what can happen. Richard was following up on an interview that Dan Bongino did with Alex Jones back on January 14th. Secret Service, Hillary's email was hacked. Last chapter in the book talks about the Clinton scandal, uh, the, 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 the Clinton email scandal. And a source fed to me and said, please, please. And by the way, Alex, an unimpeachable source by any measure. This is not some, uh, you know, lunatic, a fringe guy out there. This is a, a, a unimpeachable source said not only was the email server hacked, which is breaking news. I'm actually surprised not more people. A couple of people have emailed me about the book who read that. I didn't make a big deal out of it at the time. 
But not only was it hacked, Alex, but the Clintons knew it was hacked. They knew, and they kept using it. Think about this. Think of how deranged this is, Alex. You have a woman running for president of the United States who traded our deepest national security secrets over a private server she knew wasn't secured and that nefarious actors were looking at the emails, and she did it anyway. And not only is she not currently indicted or in prison, she's running to be president of the United States. If this is not a red flag to every Paul Revere out there that something's wrong, then you know what? The country is lost at that point because I couldn't, when I heard the story, I couldn't believe it. So there's former Secret Service Dan Bongino saying from an unpeachable source that the email server was hacked and that was breaking news last week. Now we have Richard Reeves in line at a Hillary Clinton event and he asks her, the following question. Secretary Hi. Clinton, yes. last week it was reported on Infowars.com that your email server was hacked and you knowingly continued to use your email server. Can you comment on that? Yeah, it's totally untrue. Okay. Totally Thanks. untrue. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, here we go. And this is 43 seconds of pure, pure gold from the way she scratches the side of her mouth to the looks on her staffers. You can see the one here in this picture. She is just totally disgusted that someone would dare ask a real question. The Secret Service guy, interestingly enough, he doesn't seem to care. I think he, I think he kind of likes the fact that uh, this question was asked of Hillary Clinton. She says, it's totally untrue, totally untrue. So she repeats this line. Let's look at the evidence. Politico, October 8, 2015. Clinton server faced hacking from China, South Korea, and Germany. That's totally untrue. The contractor SECNAP Network Security identified the hacks, but according to internal emails cited and briefly quoted in the Johnson letter, Clinton's email server may have lacked the threat detection program for three months. And here's Breitbart from November 1st. Hillary Clinton got hacked. Email from her friend. That's totally untrue. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton opened an email message on her private account, saw that she had received a virus-infected link, and replied to her friend that she had been hacked. Another article from Breitbart, exclusive, Hillary Clinton email company was hacked by foreign attackers. And this was back in September 22, 2015. Uh, the company that Hillary Clinton paid to manage her private email network was the victim of a massive hack during the period in which Clinton was employing it, Breitbart News has learned. That's totally untrue. In March 2011, the security company RSA was hacked. The hackers got into the company's system through a malware-infested email sent to an employee, then installed a backdoor and stole data. RSA called it an extremely sophisticated cyber attack. Also in September, Radar Online posted the story, exclusive hacker removes Hillary's unreleased emails from sale, turns over to the FBI. The person who hacked into Hillary Clinton's email server has pulled the emails off the block and turned them over to the FBI. RadarOnline.com has, has exclusively learned. After speaking with my lawyers, the hacker told Radar, I was advised I could not legally sell these and to get rid of them and turn in everything I had to the FBI. And the Telegraph also reported, back in October 1st, hackers with Russian ties tried to hack into Hillary Clinton's email five times. And how are they doing that? Through infected emails, just like the one sent to Hillary Clinton's friend. Now, InfoWars was not the first to report this breaking news. We can thank Monica Alba right here at Monica Alba. She's an NBC reporter covering Hillary Clinton on the campaign trail. Back at 2.40 p.m. today, she tweeted, Man on rope line asked Clinton about reports saying her email server was hacked. Clinton, it's totally untrue. Now, I am going to take Alba to task on this. Can you comment on that? Yeah, it's totally untrue. Okay. Totally untrue. Thanks, guys. She failed, of course, to mention Infowars.com. And then you have the Hugh Hewitt Show, where he was interviewing former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates. And here's what Robert Gates had to say about the potential for the email server being hacked. One of your colleagues, Mike Morrell, said on this program, or actually agreed with my assertion that almost certainly Russian, Chinese, and Iranians had compromised the homebrew server of the former Secretary of State. He agreed with that. Do you agree with his assessment of my assessment? Well, given the fact that the, that the Pentagon acknowledges that they get attacked about 100,000 times a day, I think the odds are pretty high. So it seems like every air-breathing, water-drinking individual on the planet agrees that Hillary Clinton's server was probably compromised, most likely 99% at this point. We're getting it from several sources, from many different angles. This has been going on for months, and yet she still says... That's totally untrue. 
But what's true, Hillary, is you've got a whole lot of explaining to do. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. And thank you so much, Rob. And if you want to know more about this, you can check out the video exclusive. Hillary confronted over hacked email. And we have some additional Hillary Clinton email news just when you thought it couldn't get any worse. Clinton email exposed intel from human spying. And this is from the intelligence agency HCSO. And this is uh, pretty much a fancy acronym. And they say it is used for reporting on human intelligence sources and outgoing operations. Both sources are familiar with the intelligence community. Inspector General's uh, January 14th letter to Congress advising the Oversight Committee that the intelligence is beyond top secret and known as special access programs identified in the Clinton email. So as uh, so you keep saying, it's not a big deal. In by and large, I think Benghazi is a much larger scandal, but uh, they don't want to go after her on Benghazi because then it's going to show wrongdoing of other people that go beyond Hillary Clinton. But for the time being, she did violate, uh, in my opinion, uh, certain laws and uh, regulations, but she says she did nothing wrong. She wanted to be able to access her emails in a very speedy fashion, even though she pretty much disregarded the emails from Ambassador Stevens in Benghazi when he was saying, hey, I need more security detail out here. And they responded in kind by taking security away from the ambassador. Now, since we're talking about a presidential candidate, let's talk about the president himself. We have President Obama sued in federal court over executive gun control. This is a great article by Adon Salazar claiming the president cannot redefine laws enacted by Congress. Judicial Watch founder Larry Klayman filed a lawsuit in federal district court on Monday, naming Obama U.S. Attorney General Lynch and Deputy Director of the Department of Justice as defendants. Now, to be fair, when we see uh, Obama in his most recent speech, or one of his more recent speeches, talking about how he wants the smart guns and all this stuff, these are things that he's saying that he would like to implement. They're not necessarily mandated at this point, but if you go back, you backtrack this guy. He said he's not going to take your rifle away. He's not going to take your shotgun away. But if you recall, was it 2013 when he was backing the proposals by Dianne Feinstein? She wanted to ban all semi-automatic or semi-automatic rifles as well as fully automatic rifles, ban things from the shelves completely like AK-47s, and it goes on and on. I would go in more detail, but that's all the time we have now for the InfoWars Nightly News. We definitely appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you again next week. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny's always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients, that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it. Infowarslife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA, so it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, 
and it just is really clean restful sleep is what the reviews are it's what i've experienced and it just synergistically puts everything in there infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 you are watching the infowars nightly news which airs 7 p.m central at infowarsnews.com and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide